Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara was a military officer, Marxist revolutionary and Pan-Africanist, who served as president of Burkina Faso from his coup in 1983 to his assassination in 1987. He is viewed by supporters as a charismatic. After basic military training and secondary school in 1966, Sankara began his military career at the age of 19 and a year later was sent to Madagascar for officer training at Ansarabe, where he witnessed popular uprisings in 1971 and 1972 against the government of Philibert Suranana, and first read the works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, profoundly influencing his political views for the rest of his life. Returning to Upper Volta in 1972, he fought in a border war between Upper Volta and Mali by 1974. He earned fame for his performance in the conflict, but years later would renounce the fighting as useless and unjust, a reflection of his growing political consciousness. He also became a popular figure in the capital of Ouagadougou. Sankara was a decent guitarist. He played in a band named Tauta Coop Jazz and rode a bicycle. In 1976, he became commander of the Commando Training Center in Po. In the same year, he met Blaise Compaor in Morocco. During the presidency of Colonel Say Zerbo, a group of young officers formed a secret organization called the Communist Officers Group. The best known members being Henry Zongo, Jean Baptiste Baukari Lingani, Blaise Compaor, and Sankara. Sankara was appointed Minister of Information in Say Zerbo's military government in September 1981. Sankara differentiated himself from other government officials in many ways, such as biking to work every day instead of driving in a car. While his predecessors would censor journalists and newspapers, Sankara encouraged investigative journalism and allowed the media to print whatever it found. This led to publications of government scandals by both privately owned and state owned newspapers. He resigned on the 12th of April 1982 in opposition to what he saw as the regime's anti labor drift. After another coup on the 7th of November 1982 brought to power Major Dr. Jean Baptiste Audreago, Sankara became Prime Minister in January 1983, but he was dismissed. In between those four months, Sankara pushed Audreago's regime for more progressive reforms. Sankara was then arrested after the French president's representative for African Affairs advisor. Guy Penn met with Colonel Yori and some. Henry Zongo and Jean-Baptiste Baukari Lingani were also placed under arrest. The decision to arrest Sankara proved to be very unpopular with the younger officers in the military regime and his imprisonment created enough momentum for his friend Blaise Compaor to lead another coup. A coup organized by Blaise Compaor made Sankara president on 4 August 1983 at the age of 33. The coup was supported by Libya, which was at the time on the verge of war with France and Chad. Sankara saw himself as a revolutionary and was inspired by the examples of Cuba's Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, and Ghana's military leader Jerry Rawlings. As president, he promoted the democratic and popular revolution. The ideology of the revolution was defined by Sankara as anti-imperialist in a speech on the 2nd of October 1983, the Discours d'Orientation Politique, written by his close associate Valersum. His policy was oriented toward fighting corruption and promoting reforestation. On the 4th of August 1984, the first anniversary of his accession, he renamed the country Burkina Faso, meaning the land of upright people in Moor and Dula, the two major languages of the country. He also gave it a new flag and wrote a new national anthem. Sankara's first priorities after taking office were feeding, housing and giving medical care to his people who desperately needed it. Sankara launched a mass vaccination program in an attempt to eradicate polio, meningitis and measles. From 1983 to 1985, two million Burkinabe were vaccinated. Prior to Sankara presidency infant mortality in Burkina Faso was about 20.8 percent, during his presidency it fell to 14.5 percent. Sankara's administration was also the first African government to publicly recognize the AIDS epidemic as a major threat to Africa. Large-scale housing and infrastructure projects were also undertaken. Brick factories were created to help build houses in effort to end urban slums. In an attempt to fight deforestation, the People's Harvest of Forest Nurseries was created to supply 7,000 village nurseries, as well as organizing the planting of several million trees. All regions of the country were soon connected by a vast road and rail building program. Over 700 kilometers of rail was laid by Burkina people to facilitate manganese extraction and the battle of the rails without any foreign aid or outside money. These programs were an attempt to prove that African countries could be prosperous without foreign help or aid. Sankara also launched education programs to help combat the country's 90% illiteracy rate. These programs had some success in the first few years. Shortly after the assassination of Sankara, there were wide-scale teacher strikes, coupled with the new regime's unwillingness to negotiate, led to the creation of revolutionary teachers. In an attempt to replace the nearly 2,500 teachers fired over a strike in 1996, anyone with a college degree was invited to teach through the revolutionary teachers program. 
volunteers merely received a 10-day training course before beginning to teach. People's Revolutionary Tribunals Shortly after attaining power, Sankara constructed a system of courts known as the Popular Revolutionary Tribunal. The courts were created originally to try former government officials in a straightforward way so the average Birkenabe could participate in or oversee trials of enemies of the revolution. They placed defendants on trial for corruption, tax evasion or counter-revolutionary activity. Sentences for former government officials were light and often suspended. The tribunals have been alleged to have been only show trials, held very openly with oversight from the public. According to the U.S. State Department, procedures in these trials, especially legal protections for the accused, did not conform to international standards. Defendants had to prove themselves innocent of the crimes they were charged with committing and were not allowed to be represented by counsel. The courts were originally met with adoration from the Burkinabe people but over time became corrupt and oppressive. So-called lazy workers were tried and sentenced to work for free or expelled from their jobs and discriminated against. Some even created their own courts to settle scores and humiliate their enemies. Accompanying his personal charisma, Sankara had an array of original initiatives that contributed to his popularity and brought some international media attention to his government. Cuba rewarded Sankara with the highest honor of the state, the Order of José Martí, Solidarity. He sold off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and made the Renault 5 the official service car of the ministers. He reduced the salaries of public servants including his own and forbade the use of government chauffeurs and first-class airline tickets. He opposed foreign aid, saying that he who feeds you, controls you. He spoke in forums like the Organization of African Unity against what he described as neocolonialist penetration of Africa through Western trade and finance. He called for a united front of African nations to repudiate their foreign debt. He argued that the poor and exploited did not have an obligation to repay money to the rich and exploiting. Thomas knew how to show his people that they could become dignified and proud through willpower, courage, honesty and work. What remains above all of my husband is his integrity. Miriam Sankara, Thomas' widow. In Ouagadougou, Sankara converted the army's provisioning store into a state-owned supermarket open to everyone. He forced well-off civil servants to pay one month's salary to public projects. He refused to use the air conditioning in his office on the grounds that such luxury was not available to anyone but a handful of Birkenapes. As president, he lowered his salary to $450 a month and limited his possessions to a car, four bikes, three guitars, a refrigerator, and a broken freezer. On the 15th of October 1987, Sankara was killed by an armed group with 12 other officials in a coup organized by his former colleague Blaise Campeor. When accounting for his overthrow, Campeor stated that Sankara jeopardized foreign relations with former colonial power France and neighboring Ivory Coast and accused his former comrade of plotting to assassinate opponents. After the coup and although Sankara was known to be dead, some CDRs mounted an armed resistance to the army for several days. According to Halana Traor, the sole survivor of Sankara's assassination, Sankara was attending a meeting with the Conseil de l'Entente. His assassins singled out Sankara and executed him. The assassins then shot at those attending the meeting, killing 12 other people. Sankara's body was riddled with bullets to the back and he was quickly buried in an unmarked grave while his widow Miriam and two children fled the nation. Campeor immediately reversed the nationalizations, overturned nearly all of Sankara's policies, rejoined the International Monetary Fund and World Bank to bring in desperately needed funds to restore the shattered economy and ultimately spurned most of Sankara's legacy.